it's just oh it's so good information you have no information on is what i would describe this book as it's just so fun but also very traumatic but also very fun hey welcome back to my channel what's up um if you're new here my name is emma it's so nice to meet you there are a bunch of new people here so hi i hope you're doing well i'd love to meet you i'd love to talk to you in the comments this is like one of my most anticipated books that i've been meaning to get to for i think almost a year now um i got this book last year as a gift and i've just been so ready to read this for a bit of context all i've read from a shadow is so my hair is drying so it's extremely poofy right now i just had a shower um all i've read from him is the alienist and other stories which was a collection of short stories so this is my full novel that i cannot wait to get to i can't wait to talk about it um and just gush about it and yeah as of right now i'm currently 44 pages through i just made a cup of tea to sit down and read a bunch more so yeah welcome to this vlog i'm so excited just to give you a brief little overview of what this book is about we are following the memoirs of a dead man um brasco basco is the man writing his memories and jotting down his life but it's so much more than that already there's so much going on especially with the play of the book itself of talking about or having this roundabout discussion of the author the place of the author perhaps the death of the author and it's just so cool and interesting everything that's going on so um yeah the chapters are also very short which is nice because like it's pretty easy to get through but also there's so much jam-packed into each short little section so um yeah without further ado i'm just gonna i'm just gonna sit down and read some more and welcome to the vlog rxd stop you're done it is tuesday had a very busy day yesterday and i need to go to class actually right now we're gonna go catch the bus today we are studying t.s Eliot's the love song of j alfred proofrock which is great i love it i love that poem a lot um i'm very happy about it i actually have pretty much all of it memorized too which i did like a couple years ago but yeah today i feel so cozy I recently got this shirt thrifted and it's like my new favorite thing. It feels very Slytherin, but I spent the morning doing some emails and stuff. And oh, I actually should have started a timer before I did this clip because I've been doing this thing where I've been trying to see how many hours I'm actually working like on YouTube whether that's editing or doing emails or just like the whole business side of things so um yes i do need to do that because it's been fun like calculating how many hours i work this is what i was listening to all this morning i started vita nostra um i'm almost 100 pages in with my cute bookmark that one of you guys made me thank you so much i love it it's so gorgeous um but yeah i'll talk about this when i get back but that's what i've been listening to this morning. Okay, so I was meant to be doing a whole vlog on the posthumous memoirs of Brasco Bass by Machado, which is what I'm currently reading. But as you can see, I have like zoomed through this so quickly without even updating. I've just been so absorbed. I think I got a few clips from the vlog that I had started because this was my intention, but I just got so sucked in, so carried away. It's so quick to read because the chapters are, most of them are just extremely short. Sometimes they're only like a page long or not even. So I've just been absolutely zooming through this. Today is now Wednesday. It's 4.15. I'm about to go get groceries. I am just loving this so much. It's so great. Um, if you've never heard of this, if you don't know what it's about, we are following our narrator, Prasco Bas. He is dead. He's died. And he's now chronicling his death. He's releasing um, the book like that you're holding and he's writing this and it's just so cool. There's so many interesting topics, so many cool discussions about the author, what an author is, 
um, what writing is, how writing is perceived, and it's just very meta in a very good way and I'm really really enjoying it and I've tabbed a few things that I wanted to talk about but on top of that the writing is gorgeous he's so funny so the sentences are so wonderful and it's just like it's just such a pleasure to read honestly it's just so playful but it also discusses so many serious things I only have about 80 less than 80 pages left so my goal is to finish this tonight actually I am half in shadow, it's a little bit later. It's now seven o'clock and I just did a few things. I got groceries like you saw, which I'm really happy about. And then I was just journaling a little bit. I started a new journal. This tea is so good. Thank you so much. This is from Danielle. Thank you so much for sending me tea. That's so kind. And you already saw the little leaf. I'm just so obsessed with this, but I do have some more reading updates because today I went on like a huge, it was like a preemptive spring cleaning because I got really excited. I've been seeing signs of spring everywhere, I feel like, and today I don't even know what kind of bird it was. I've actually never seen this kind of bird, but it jumped up on my balcony and it's been so long since I've heard bird song um, like outside and it just sat there. It was like half red on top and then his bottom half was like speckled beige and dark brown and black. It looked like a half cardinal, half sparrow and somewhere in between that size too. And I don't know, he just stood there singing such a sweet little song for so long. So I felt like I wanted to deep clean the whole apartment and I didn't really finish. I didn't get to vacuum in here or clean my bathroom yet, but everything else out there is so nice and clean. So that's what I did today, which brings me to my main point, which is that the whole time I was doing it, I was listening to my audiobook, which is Vida Nostra. This was also a gift. Thank you so much. This is by Marina and Sergei Diachenko, if I'm saying that right, and it's translated by Julia Maytov Hersey. So I picked this up. Maybe I can just stand here. Yes. I picked this book up. Um, I'm reading this one, or I'm listening to this one on Audible because I couldn't find it anywhere on Libby, so I used my Audible credit on it. And I am 238 pages through. So basically, how do I describe this? Someone reviewed this on Goodreads as Harry Potter, but written by Kafka. 
maybe it's just me but I'm finding it quite hard to fall in love with this book yet so basically we're following the 16 year old girl when the book starts and her name is Sasha and she is living with her mother this is a Ukrainian book so I'm also going to be using this for my around the world challenge for Ukraine um, but one day when they're on vacation they're on summer vacation Sasha thinks that this weird man with like these dark eyes and this very like somber creepy atmosphere around her or around him is watching her and she's like what are you doing what's going on mom don't you see him and her mom's like you're being so stupid stop clearly no one's following you but he, of course he's following her and this is in the synopsis but he comes up to her and he's like yo you need every morning to wake up at 4 a.m and you need to swim out in the ocean and touch the buoy boy boy okay i've honestly never been able to say this word in my whole entire life and now it's, it's coming to bite me you know the floaty things that worn boats and stuff boy a buoy a buoy boy i think it's the spelling that really gets me i think it's buoy right and it's just this really dark creepy atmosphere of like there's like just this whole forcing of doing things throughout this book but anyway she does it and she gets back on shore and she vomits up these gold coins so i guess kind of kafka-esque it's giving me some kafka for sure after she does a few more of these weird tests for him she gets accepted into the school that no one has ever heard of um it's reminding me a little bit of well not really the last graduate i dnf that one by naomi novik i did not love it but this school no one has heard of everyone else was kind of coerced into going there in the same way because if they don't cooperate bad things happen um but i still don't know what's going on they are learning something immaterial like the textbooks don't make sense it's all gibberish it's not in russian it's not in any language they can understand um for example she's meant to listen to things they're like listen to this tape but the tape doesn't really have any sound or music on it whatsoever but unbeknownst to a lot of people changes start to happen to the students that i'm not even really sure what they are honestly right now i definitely just feel lost going into it and like obviously getting this much of the way through i was thinking that a lot of what was going on was kind of commenting on or at least it was making me feel um the very weird abstract way that the education system is in the world you literally are just forced to go to school and if you don't bad things will happen it's the law but then i guess for people who you know when i went to school for the first time you sit down you get a book and you're like this is gibberish i can't read you don't know how to read yet um and just a lot of things in here were reflecting like the education system to me but in like a very satirical very baffling abstract kind of way but which actually makes sense when applied to school when you look at it but i don't think that's actually what this is doing this is more like fantasy dark academia i guess there was a quote there was a really good quote where someone said all learning is coercion and all like knowledge of culture must be forced on you essentially is what one of the teachers said but as of right now more than anything i'm honestly just bored i'm not super in love with the writing like i said i really have no grasp upon what's happening and maybe that's intentional and maybe at the end of the book it'll all get wrapped up but as per the reviews i read people just seem to finish the book and be like what was that which is kind of the feeling i'm having right now which is sad because i thought i was gonna fall in love with this one i really thought i was gonna fall in love with this one but honestly we're just following sasha around and her classmates as they do who knows what because i don't think the book is doing a very good job of really telling me what they're doing and to be fair like they don't even know their whole this whole book just no one knows what they're doing okay is what i'm trying to say no one knows what they're studying people keep saying oh you'll understand when you get to third year or fourth year when you get a placement or something but they don't even know really what they're studying so i'm just honestly lost i'm along for the ride but it's not really a fun ride so i'm really hoping this um gets better soon it says that she rapidly undergoes changes that defy matter and time with experiences that are nothing like what she could have dreamed of before but which are suddenly all she could ever want she is becoming a little bit of a terrible person and what i will say as well is that they keep saying oh you know reality isn't what you think it is you have this like veil over your eyes we're gonna help you wake up and stuff but i think the readers the readers not being helped to wake up so i'm just lost honestly i don't think i'm lost because it might just be that the book is actually not very good do i trust myself or do i trust the book i don't know anyway like i said i started this a couple days ago i'm 238 pages through i have 
a little less than halfway to go and yeah that is Vita Nostra so that is the audiobook I'm currently listening to but it's now seven o'clock I have so much work to do school is getting really busy and I have to sort out a couple essay topics which is always the most stressful and hardest part. Um, I'm sorting out both of my essays at the minute because they're due fairly close together so the first one I've decided to do on Frankenstein but I still don't know but I still don't know yet what I'm going to be talking about in Frankenstein so I'm a little lost there. There's a wealth of things to talk about but I just don't know yet what I'm going to do and then for my renaissance class I think I've picked a few topics um, he actually listed out 44 topics for us to pick from, which is like really nice, but it, it definitely takes a long time to decide. And of course you can pick your own topic for both of these essays if you want as well. Um, but not that it's easy. Oh, dust just went in my teen. No. It is easier sometimes a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing, but, um, that's what I've got going tonight. And then, like I said, I do want to finish the posthumous memoirs tonight. Look at it. I'm so close. So those are my plans. Okay, so it's now Thursday, I'm just back from class and I've been looking forward to this the whole time while I was in class, I just got this. Um, I've had Castle Kitchen, their hot chocolate before, but I've never had their mint dark chocolate. So I decided to buy it and I had it last night. It is so good. You guys know mint chocolate is my favorite chocolate, but it's like really hard to find good mint chocolate because even among, I'm, I'm a very snobby mint chocolate person. It's just, it's like a fine line between tasting like toothpaste or mint chocolate heaven so this is so good so i'm literally making another one right now um i already just i just boiled the water but i've been looking forward to this all day that is fantastic so it's been a hot second since we've spoken but during that time i have well i've had a very busy week today is sunday so yes we've had a lot of things going on a lot of school work a lot of other things and it's been good though it's been a good good kind of busy which is nice but also during that time i've been in such a reading mood and so since the last time we've spoken i've actually managed to finish two books i started two more books and I bought three more books. So we have a lot to talk about. I hope you have a snack or uh, a tea. This is a great time in the vlog to pause and get yourself one if you haven't already, because I can feel this is going to be a very lengthy clip. So hope you're in for that. But um, yeah, I just want to catch up. So let me start with the books that I finished because that makes sense. So the first one that I ended up finishing was the posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas because I couldn't help myself. Like I just couldn't help myself. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to talk about this a lot in this vlog. I'll probably come back in a couple days to spew more things about it because this was fantastic. I gave it five stars. I kind of had a feeling I would. It was, it was honestly like just at the cusp of a five star though which was a little bit surprising i think i just had a lot of expectations for this but in the end i love this i love this so much i highly recommend i'm pretty sure i've already said maybe a little bit of what this is about but it's just so cool to me that this uh either was it finished being written or it came out in 1881 but it just feels so unbelievably modern i don't know i would say it's probably like the oldest piece of work that i read that i feel is so 
just here in the present like it feels like this could have been written yesterday it feels like this could have been written in the modernist period it feels oh my god it's just so good and like to know that he was doing this in 1881 is so impressive and so many people owe so much to him i think whether they even realize it or not um but essentially like i was saying this is about a dead man who is writing his memoir of his life and his life is honestly pretty ordinary. There's not a lot of events that go on in here. And he is part of the um, arist aristocratic, I can never say that word. That's one of those words I can never say. I, Cause I always want to say aristocratic, but it's like aristocratic. He's an aristocrat, the aristocats. And so he is quite well off, but he also bemoans so much in his life. It's him complaining all of the time, even though he actually could have quite a great life, I think. A lot of it is about his failed political ventures. A lot of this you follow like the love story in his life, I guess, which starts to take over a pretty big portion of this book, actually. That's in the synopsis. Um, but wow, I'll just give you, I'll give you some of my favorite lines to start with because this was so good. I've already talked a little bit about the whole um, death of the author, what Machado is doing, what Brass is doing, because he's invented an author in here that is now dead. But he tells us, of course, that um, he is not, what is the phrase he uses? He says, I'm not exactly an author recently deceased, but a deceased man recently an author for whom the tomb was another cradle. And the second consideration that you should take into account, he says, is that this would make the writing wittier and more novel by starting with his um, death, because the novel begins with his death. The first page is, the first chapter is the demise of the author. And it's just so cool. There's so much to talk about there. Like, it's just endless conversations to be had because he will like stop a chapter here he'll start a chapter there he'll end a chapter with like no this chapter was absolutely garbage don't read it or this chapter is completely nonsense like i'm so sorry or you know what i had these notes for a chapter but then that chapter just ends up becoming notes for a chapter that he never got around to writing and it's just this really oh it's just such a cool technique in one of the first chapters uh he has a dream where he's in delirium and he's talking to pandora and a lot of this is about well the last page is so devastating i'm not gonna spoil anything um there's not really too much to spoil actually but anyway a lot of this book is about life and is it worth living essentially um and how much of life is misery and yeah anyway she says you are alive i desire no other torment Yes, worm, you are alive. You must not fear losing the tattered rags that are your pride. For a few hours yet, you shall still taste the bread of pain and the wine of misery. Why would you want a few more moments of life? To devour and then be devoured? Have you not tired of the spectacle of the struggle? You have had your fill of all of the least vile and least grievous things I have to offer. The breaking of day, the melancholy of dusk, the quiet of night, the face of the earth, and last of all sleep, the greatest benefit my hands can bestow. Time cares not for the passing minute, only that which is to come. The minute ahead is strong. Mary believes it is the bearer of eternity, and it too bears death and perishes like the one before it. It's just, oh, it's so good. A lot of this book too, well, it, it, a lot of it is like saying, hey, I'm not a novel because this is a memoir. This is my life. This isn't a novel, but of course it is a novel. Um, and it's such like a cheeky, it's just such a cheeky little book. This is the cheekiest book ever. But a lot of it too is brass like, the dead the dead author who's writing this being like oh i'm dead now so i can tell you the truth i can reveal the sentiments like the the true feelings i was having how people really were i'm not gonna lie to you about how mediocre my life was how much of it i wasted blah 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 um and it seems like he is kind of understanding now that he's dead the truth of his life but that's really not it at all because he is still so dis disillusioned even after he is dead and like you can really see that um with a lot of the way that he chooses to portray his life but he says in death we unbutton ourselves unpaint ourselves unadorn ourselves confess plainly what we were and what we failed to be because after all there are no more neighbors nor friends nor enemies nor acquaintances nor strangers there is no audience but then obviously he's writing for an audience because he is somehow, he doesn't tell us how, sending the pages he's writing in the afterlife back into the world for living people to read. So there is still an audience. It's just, it's just such a cool thing to examine. I would love to do so much work on this book. The writing is so funny. It's so easy to read. Like I said, it's so fresh. Um, 
the Brass Cubas and Machado writing Brass Cubas is like, you know, this book reeks of the grave, it's rotten, it's decomposing, it's really no good, it's so tinged with death, but it's really not. This book is like so alive and like, it just really feels like this was written 10 years ago. And the chapters are quite short, like most of the chapters are only a page or a page and a half long, so it is really easy to get through. And sometimes he's like, you know, I'm regretting writing this book, what am I doing? I'm getting bored, I'm getting tired, I'm really not a good writer. Um, and just like Machado's way of framing certain things, this is what I got from a bunch of his short stories. He's just so funny, so clever, but uh, as an example in stuff like this, when some of his family members are dying, he says, I was not distraught. I took them to the cemetery as one might take money to the bank. Some died, others were born. I was left to the flies. <sighs> it's so good. Anyway, it's so good. There's like a bunch of philosophy in here. He has a friend who becomes this weird philosopher and starts to develop this philosophy there's so much about life and death whether life is worth living what do you have to give up to live um, but then it also is a little sneaky peek into like the drawing room the society the etiquette of the upper class uh during this time period and it's just it's just everything is so good so i finished this five stars loved it so much sorry i just went on a huge ramble about that unfortunately this next book i picked up i really did not love as much because i also finished vita nostra i was listening to this one on audiobook like i was saying i think i was saying it was becoming a bit of a chore to listen to and that's definitely what it feels like you know when you're just struggling to finish a book because you're not really hating it by any means because once again i gave this like a very generous three star but you're really not loving it and you're just waiting for it to be over. You're not really vibing with it anymore and you just want to move on, but you also want to finish it and see what happens. That was my time with this. I seem to be in the minority, I think, because I went on Goodreads. Everyone seems to love this book, but also not really be sure what they read. So do it that way you will. <laughs> So for me, this book became very repetitive. It just seemed to be the exact same things that Sasha was doing. She'd go to school, she'd visit her mom, she'd study something, she didn't know what she was studying. This whole book as well, the reader is just waiting to find out, kind of like Sasha is, we're in the same position trying to find out like what she's actually studying. What is the purpose of all this? Because like I said, no one really knows. The upper year people don't really seem to know. The teachers are very reticent. They don't want to tell them anything and everyone's just kind of waiting to see why the heck they're learning things Things that they don't even know they're learning. I will say the reveal was interesting. I'm not going to say too much more about this. I might go into it more in my wrap-up. It's something I've thought of before actually myself but never really seen it executed anywhere and I think the- I won't say any- I'm trying not, trying not to say anything else about it but I think this is an idea that I've heard other people have seen executed elsewhere probably better because I don't think like the reveal of kind of the whole mystery of the school was done very well because um, it was definitely confusing. I wouldn't recommend this book for you if um, you just don't like knowing what's going on, don't like very ambiguous um, plots or characters or mysteries, and I will say the magic system of the school, um, if I can call it that, is very hard to wrap your head around and it's actually quite unenjoyable for the time when you don't know what's happening. At least for me, I found it unenjoyable. As well, there are no chapter breaks, so it adds this very suffocating feeling to the school because you don't get a break. You're just constantly being bar bombarded with information. Can you really call it information? Because can you call something information if it's not giving you... Well, it can be giving you information even if you don't know it is, right? Because technically everything is information. So it's information you have no information on. Information you have no information on is what I would describe this book as. The writing style, I just didn't find... I just didn't really notice it, if that makes sense. It's a writing style that I don't think... It is in translation as well, but I didn't really think it added too much to the story. Um, and as well, a lot of people categorize this as like a psychological horror or suspense. Didn't really feel any of that, did not feel any of the horror elements. Although I would say like the elements you could argue are there. I just don't think they did anything for me at all because I was just so bored is definitely the big thing. I was extremely bored reading this book. So that is Vita Nostra. <sighs> I don't know what it is with me in Dark Academia. This has definitely some Dark Academia vibes. We're studying at the school where things can potentially hurt you and kill you, but 
just haven't liked any of them. I don't know, which brings me to the books that I am reading. And the first one we'll talk about is Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer, um, because this is the dark academic book pick for February and March. This is Lucy's pick. I am 30 pages through. I'm using my phantom bookmark that one of you guys made me. Thank you so much, Aurora. Um, I love it. But I'm also not liking this. I just think I'm so done. Actually, I wasn't even really starting to begin being enamored with Dark Academia books in general. I really like Dark Academia, the aesthetic, but in terms of Dark Academia in book form, I really liked none of them and I've read quite a few by now. Um, and this one is, <laughs> I don't want to say this one is going to be another one like that because actually the writing is really compelling in here. It's very quick to get through, I will say. But again, I'm just so sick of people. <laughs> period. I'm just so sick of very pretentious people at academies or pretentious schools or something thinking they're so much better than everyone else, being this very um, not inclusive little closed group of pretension where they hold candlelight poetry readings after dinner and call themselves the death girls and become obsessed with women poets who have committed suicide. I actually think that's a very important and like really cool topic of exploration and I'm excited to see what she's going to do with it in here. I hope she does more than the vibe I'm getting with it right now because right now it's just um, three girls who are all obsessed with three poets. We have Sylvia Plath and Sexton and another one which is a completely made up uh, poet but they're all obsessed with these women poets who have committed suicide. I don't know what it is. I think a lot of it is like the very closed off, not inclusive nature I was talking about. I think that's what's been bugging me. It's just like this very clicky, cliquey ideology that I feel like is very narrow-minded and just scoffs at people who can't even begin to understand what they're going through when really what they're doing isn't that much. Like anyone can sit around in a circle and read poetry. I think this is a topic I want to think more deeply on um, because I really don't have any good concrete formulated ideas on why I'm really not getting along with dark academia in book form at the moment. And I do think a lot of books that are about academia do criticize that very narrow-minded viewpoint, kind of closed off little bubble that a lot of either universities or the school system in general fosters within their students. But I think a lot of the time maybe that critique is missed and then it, it leads people into believing that like this is what you should be doing or academia is this very narrow, um, closed room kind of atmosphere when really it's not, or I mean it can be, but it shouldn't be. It should be for everyone. It should be accessible. It should be put out there. I mean, it's just learning. You should share that love of learning with everyone. And, you know, I think if that's what dark academia or ac books about schools and academic settings in general are doing, are showing that non-accessibility, that's really great. Um, However, it does seem to be the main focus of all of the books we're reading and as well that does entail you having to read about people who are cultivating these closed off spaces and thinking they're so much better than everyone and kind of creating this superiority complex around poets or English literature or the classics and classical studies or ancient Greek. Um, and it is like the subject areas very much that are honed in on, obsessed over, attached to, um, yeah, I don't know, just a lot to think about there. Like I said, I'm just babbling the first thing that's coming off my mind, which is never a good idea. Or maybe it is. Actually, it's probably a fine idea. I don't know. So far, we are following mostly um, Claire, who is one of the Death Girls, and her poet is Lucy Asher, who is the made-up poet that Meg Wolitzer has invented for this book. I'm not really certain to what extent this Death Girl identity, like what it is. There's also a dude in here named Julian. I really like Julian. He's my favorite character so far, but we've only met four characters. Um, and he starts to kind of have a crush or want to get into a relationship with Claire. I really like Julian so far. He's a sweetheart in my opinion. Um, I hope that doesn't change. I am very intrigued though. I want to I want to see where it goes. I want to give it a chance because I want to find just one book about academia, one book about dark academia, whatever label, whatever thing you want to call it in my life that I enjoy reading because I didn't love The Secret History. I didn't like Vita Nostra. I didn't like um, Ninth House. I'm not loving Sleepwalking. If We Were Villains was probably the one I liked the most, but like I didn't really even love that one that much. Still reading Things Fall Apart. Um, I think I'm gonna not say anything about this until I finish it because I'm very 
much not sure yet what my thoughts are on this book. So I am 88 pages through. The typeface in here is so tiny. So yep. Okay. And then the two books that I picked up, I started reading Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton. Oh, pure joy. Like the smile. I just can't stop smiling. I love this book so much. I love it so much. I just keep reading. I'll read a few pages and then I'll stop and I'll just sit there and smile and I'll be like, I feel like I'm home. I feel like I'm home reading this book. Just so many good feelings all around. I know they're not gonna last for long because I know what happens. This is a reread. This is the second book in the Fortuna Sworn series. Oh, you can't see it. It's over there. Um, but yeah. Look at it. This is the book with the werewolf. We have a werewolf in here um, that Fortuna met in the last book and he's one of my favorite characters. I just love everyone in this book. Like Restless Slumber begins and it just like busts open and bursts open. Fortuna Sworn, the first book, because that book is very much focused on kind of one problem, which is um, Damon, her brother, who's been missing. Finding Damon um, is just all about Damon, really, and her. But this book, like you start it and all of a sudden you have met like 20, probably not 20, like 15 new characters. There's like a whole bunch of different problems. So many plot lines are opening up and it's just so good. Like I just started this a few days ago and I'm already 124 pages in. This is such a quick book to read. Like I'll sit down and I'll just fly through it. I think because it's also a reread is probably why, but this book is 437 pages and like at no point am I ever like, I don't even check to see when the chapter ends. You know, when you're like reading and you kind of just flick ahead to see when the chapter's over. I don't even do that. Like I'm just so enjoy. This world is pure enjoyment for me. Um, and it's so fun. It's just so fun, but also very traumatic, but also very fun. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So this is nice because it's like kind of a fantasy romance. It is fantasy romance, but it is very dark, but there's also some very nice um, relationships and everyone's attractive. Everyone's attractive in this book. Every single person is attractive. Because I finished my audiobook of Vita Nostra on Audible, I decided to pick up um, another one on Audible because this is included in their Plus catalog. And I do have a goal of reading or listening to all the books on my shelf, um, just like prioritizing them mostly this year. And so I picked up The Greek Way by Edith Hamilton. This one, I think I picked up my first year of uni, the summer after my first year of uni, because I was in a mood to gobble up everything i wanted to learn everything i think like my first year of university was just like i was like oh my gosh university is amazing i'm learning how to think which like goes in very much in discussion with vita nostra because the school literally teaches you like how to think but that is quite how i think about my university experience so far like yes it's it's given me so much information it's opened me up to a world of literature and different things um, I've taken so many different subjects besides literature and the classical studies, but more than that, like in those two disciplines, like it has taught you different ways of thinking and how to think for yourself, which has just been something I would, because my dad would always tell me that. He'd always be like, you go to university to learn how to think. And I was like, what are you talking about? What does that even mean? But he is so right. And that is so true. Anyway, I bought a whole bunch of books off of thrift books. Um, when I had finished my first year of uni, kind of as like a, an exam treat to myself. Um, and I had ordered them sent to my grandma's place in Florida, um, where she was staying at the winter for the winter because, um, there's free shipping within the United States, sadly not to Canada. <clears throat> I'm talking so much, I'm talking so much my throat. And then when she came back to Canada, she would <laughs> bring like a whole extra suitcase of books for me. So thank you for doing that for a couple years for me, grandma. Anyway, The Greek Way was one of the ones that I bought um, that year off of thrift books. And it is a, definitely a little beat up, like <sighs> that's the cover. But uh, The Greek Way by Edith Hamilton, she put this together in 1930. Yeah. She graduated from Bryn Mawr College in 1894, and she wrote this when she was 63 years old. So this one is all about the Greeks from their writing, their way of life, their philosophy. It just covers everything. It's so clear that Edith Hamilton has such a deep respect and love of the ancient Greeks. A lot of this is definitely dated, but not too much because of course, when you're talking about the ancient world and stuff that's been uncovered and discovered, not that much is gonna change. I will say so far, there's some things that I'm like, um, this is more of like an opinion piece of yours rather than scholarly 
scholarship which is always fine um but it's just important to remember that i guess but i'm 64 pages through and it's just really a joy to listen to i've missed classical studies so much like i just miss it okay my throat is about to self-construct what i just have not spoken this much all weekend that's why yeah i just miss it so much because before um, my concussion i was doing a double major or an honor specialization major and then just a normal major um the normal major was in classical studies so ancient greece and roman a little bit of egypt and i miss it so much and i know i can go back and i know i can continue that or even do a minor or even a certificate. actually i think i do have a certificate now if i graduate with the number of credits i have for classical studies but um it's just so interesting and like this book really just does like reiterate the fact that we are greek <laughs> we are ancient greece the west is just ancient Greece um, to an extent, obviously. But yeah, this has just been so fun and it's just reigniting so many things. A lot of this, of course, I already know, but it is just important to me to rehash them, rethink things because you can't ever think something the same way twice, I guess, or your feelings will always change. Um, however, fractionally is that a word towards something, but yeah, I'm really, really liking this. So I would highly recommend. She also has one called The Roman Way, which is just all about the Romans, but yeah. Oh, I just miss studying Greece. Such a pleasure. So much fun. So now that I've rambled so much, let's get to a little book haul. So I was gifted a gift card to use on books, so I did. Obviously I did, and I ordered some books that I've had my eye on for a long time. I bought three. So the first one that I ordered is a manga, and it is The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. First of all, <laughs> This is so cute! This is so cute! This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Look it! Oh my gosh! So it is about this little girl and a monster, and they are from the other side, but um, in a land far away there were two kingdoms, the outside where twisted beasts roamed that could curse with a touch, and the inside where humans lived in safety and peace. The girl and the beast should never have met, but when they do, a quiet fairy tale begins. Um, this is a story of two people, one human, one inhuman, who linger in the hazy twilight that separates night from day. I have no idea what this is going to be about, but this just looked so up my alley. I've heard a few people talking about this. I just can't wait. I can't wait. So I was like, you know what? You've had your eye on this for over a year now. Why don't you just pick it up? And so I did. These next two, actually, I might read one of them quite soon, but then this other one, I just, yeah, I'm going to save this for next year because I finally got myself... Hello? Bro. Did you hear that? No, absolutely not like this. Hello? Listen, if you're a ghost and you want to talk about books, just say so. Absolutely not. Not today. Anyway, the Nutcracker. Maybe it was E.T.A. Hoffman back there. Oh, so I finally bought myself the Nutcracker. I've never had an edition of this. I know. What is my problem? This is like one of my favorite things ever. I have like three retellings of it, but this is the really gorgeous illustrated edition. This one's illustrated by Santa Anuka. Um, I'm just... Oh, look at this. I think I heard about these editions from Gavin over at How to Train Your Gavin. I saw it. I saw that he had them and I was like, you know what? I need to get one. It's very nice, like soft material as well. And they also have the snow queen as well as the fir tree, the pine tree. The other hand's Christian Anderson fairy tale, I believe, but I'm so excited to read this. I'm obviously going to save this for next December, but I just love that I have it now. So, and then the last one I got is a romance and that is from Lukov with Love. I was watching a little bit of the Olympics, watching a bunch of figure skating. I got in my figure skating feels and I was missing our prime ministers, Tessa and Scott. And so what did I do? I ordered <laughs> From Luke Up With Love by Mariana Zapata, which is a figure skating, I think kind of enemies to lovers romance. Um, I've heard a little bit about this. I've heard tons about Mariana Zapata and you guys know I've been trying to read more romance. I'm just so happy to have this. I think it's a perfect time to read it with the Olympics on and also with all of the snow and skating vibes outside and i'm just so happy to have this it's so beautiful and it's nice and buttery it's nice and buttery so we follow jasmine 
um, who is a figure skater, but she's not doing well. She keeps falling <laughs> and she's not having a great time. She has always been second. She's never come first place and she always has to contend with the fact that Ivan Lukov um, is like the best figure skater. He beats everyone. He's always first place and he's quite, I think, ballooned about it, if you know what I mean. Um, but then I think they have to become partners and the rest of that ensues. So I'm really excited. I'm absolutely just going to picture Tessa and Scott as <laughs> the two characters. Oh, I miss them. I just want them to come back. <sighs> so that is from Lukov um, with love. I'm very happy to have these three little books now. So I'm going to put all these books away. I'm going to drink some tea, but I'm actually supposed to get into a call with um, my friends now to Skype for a little bit because we haven't talked in a while and now my voice is fried from talking to you all so I'm just gonna sit there with my green tea and probably listen to the conversation but yeah I'm in a really great mood today I had a really good day yesterday um why don't I tell you about that too why don't you tell me about your weekend how was your weekend yesterday I slept in I had a great sleep in and then I finished editing up my desk makeover video which I really enjoyed although Premiere if anyone else is, has been using Premiere Pro recently Adobe Premiere Pro to edit has it been like giving you problems because I've been having a lot of like weird bugs and just like little errors and stuff that's been happening to me very recently and I've been going on like obviously forums and like having to fix all these issues with the software I've been seeing people have been saying the same thing about Premiere Pro recently so let me know because it's been it's been very um, inhibiting my workflow, I guess, and the speed of editing and stuff, which has been sad, but I did manage to get that video out finally after like having to fix 5 million things with it, but I also went on a walk yesterday. It was very cold. I got to feed some squirrels. That was fun. Then I just read a lot and I just had like the perfect cozy day and I was in a good mood for- oh, I was in a good mood for the whole entire day, but then I also watched Catch Me If You Can um, with Leonardo and DiCaprio and I'd never seen that before, but it was really good. So I watched that yesterday too, like just throughout the whole day, watching bits and pieces here and there. And it was really fun, really like that. So yeah, I just had a great day. And now I'm gonna go chat with my friends and do some essay research, essay research too. Unfortunately, which is why this is all back here. Actually, not unfortunately. I'm even looking forward to this. I'm just in a fantastic mood and now I can't talk anymore. So I'm gonna go. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. <sighs> Sorry, this was so long.